Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. Last season, we discussed what it means to be more like Jesus, and this time, I thought we'd take a closer look at the temptations that people have to see if we can figure out why we're tempted to commit sins. People generally commit sins because they're after something they want, so they sin in an attempt to get it. So let's start looking at the things that people want, beginning with the biggest want of them all, power. As usual with these analysis videos, let's start off with a basic definition of power so that we understand what we're talking about, and the first definition on MW is helpful for our purposes. Definition 1A. 1. Ability to act or produce an effect. Notice that this definition is actually describing two separate things, a power of action and the effectiveness of that action for producing effects. For instance, we can say that I have the power to drive to the store because I can pick up my keys and get into my car, then drive there. This comes from my ability to act. Producing effects is also a type of power, such as when we say that the town next to ours was hit by a powerful storm. We mean that the storm had a large effect on the town, such as knocking down tree branches and causing power outages. These two things show that there's a type of power which is a freedom, acting, and a type of power which isn't a freedom, the impersonal effects of a storm. A person can have both kinds of power, in fact both can be present in the same action, like choosing to build a skyscraper. It's both a free action and an action with large effects. Not everyone can build a skyscraper, but this is the type of power that enables people to do and accomplish great things. Every type of power that increases the abilities of normal people is like this. Cell phones, for instance, grant large numbers of new powers to anyone who has access to one. However, there's also another type of power. Definition 2a. Possession of control, authority, or influence over others. This is the power of a king, politician, or employer. There's nothing inherently wrong with having this kind of power. In fact, most economies would collapse if no one did. But there's a big difference between these different kinds of power, and depending on which one you're after and why, you can end up heading for trouble. The first definition of power is about having the ability to do something. A man with no legs doesn't have the power to walk, while a person with a phone and some money has the power to order pizza for dinner. I have the power to make videos about various topics. These are real, objective powers that we have or lack. We can either do these things or we can't. By contrast, the second definition refers to influence, the ability to control others. A king of the Middle Ages could have a member of court expelled or imprisoned, or send his knights out to bully the local farmers if he wanted to. However, there are many things that you or I can do, like install an air conditioner, that no king of the Middle Ages was ever able to do. Therefore, having this second kind of power doesn't necessarily grant you the first kind. Just as the ability to fly a plane or use a ham radio doesn't necessarily increase the number of people who work for you, so commanding a large army doesn't necessarily enable you to fly through the air or communicate over great distances. It only means that you have more influence than the other guys do. The second type of power, therefore, is almost entirely relative. If you have a hundred men doing what you say, you may think you're pretty powerful. Then someone else shows up with 200 men, and all of a sudden you don't seem so powerful relative to them. So these two types of power are quite different from each other, and mostly separate. An objective power and a relative power. Which of these is more of a dangerous temptation? Well, either one can be a dangerous temptation in a certain sense. People can obsess over acquiring some new ability or piece of technology, and end up committing sins to try to get it. However, in general... A person with power of type 1 is still able to make all of their own choices with it. If they choose to use their own power to do what's right, there isn't really anything stopping them. The second type of power, influence, carries with it a few dangers that the first type doesn't. First, people with lots of influence are often very vulnerable to pride, seeing themselves as superior to other people because of the influence they wield which can lead them to make reckless and harmful choices, even oppressing those who work for them. Secondly, those with influence generally get it by enlisting the help of other people with influence, and that, in turn, requires them to make concessions to those people. 
Very often, those concessions can involve taking the side of an evildoer in a dispute, which in turn compromises the influential person, harming their soul, and making them even more likely to cause further harm in the future. Eventually, they can start to feel trapped by the people they owe favors to, to the point where their so-called power actually involves very little personal freedom. However, worst of all, because the power of influence is only relative, people who crave influence are motivated to hurt or damage the influence of others, even if those other people haven't done anything to hurt them. They do this because, even though they may not gain any actual new abilities, power one, from hurting those people, their own power seems to increase precisely because the power of others has decreased. The problem is this doesn't just stop. This is why leaders of nations are tempted so strongly by authoritarianism and totalitarianism, the absolute elevation of their own power at the expense of everyone else's, to the point where virtually everyone in their territory is relegated to slave status. There is no amount of harm that a person obsessed with relative power won't cause in their blind pursuit of their obsession. That's not to say that power is inherently evil. If it were, God wouldn't be able to be powerful. It's entirely possible for a powerful person to also be good, and as usual, the Bible offers some good examples of this. As it happens, there are two figures in the scriptures who perfectly illustrate these contrasting types of power. The power to accomplish definite things used for good, and the power of immense influence relative to others used to oppress people. Moses and Pharaoh in that period of history, there probably wasn't anyone who had such staggering relative influence as Pharaoh did. Thousands upon thousands of people were kept as slaves by him, seeing little or no benefit from the temples, tombs, and monuments they were forced to build. Pharaoh didn't force his slaves to work for their own good, but for his. And his only concern about the slaves were of how he could keep control of them, and what to have them do next. His predecessor was the same, even being willing to throw male Hebrew babies into the river in order to keep their people under control. Their power was influence, motivated by greed and selfishness. Moses was different. He'd never had much power in his life. He'd been raised in Pharaoh's house, but it was always understood that he would never be a Pharaoh himself. One day, outraged by the mistreatment of his people, he killed an Egyptian slave driver and fled to Midian, where he became a shepherd. It was only once he was an old man himself that he found the bush that seemed to be on fire, and from which the voice of God spoke to him, granting him the power to face Pharaoh and demand the release of his people. Unlike Pharaoh, the power that God gave to Moses was not mere influence over others. The miracles which God did for Moses brought plagues upon Egypt like nothing that had ever been seen before then proceeded to lead the Israelite slaves to safety through a divided sea, and guide them through the desert with a pillar of fire, feeding them with honey bread that appeared every morning like dew, fresh water that sprang forth from rocks, and huge, miraculous gatherings of birds that were good for food. Illnesses were cured by simply looking at the image of a serpent created for that purpose, and those who tried to claim authority for themselves were swallowed up by the earth. Each of these is a very definite ability to cause a specific effect, which no person or group of people could have caused on their own. These are objective powers, not mere powers based on influence. However, what really makes Moses different from Pharaoh is in how he used these powers. They were deployed not for his own personal gain or selfish desires, but in order to free others from slavery according to the will of God. Moses was a man of surpassing humility. Numbers 12.3 and because of this, even when given power, he placed it at the service of God, which shows how power should always be treated. Power shouldn't be used only for its own sake, or pursued just for the sake of becoming powerful. That changes power into the master of people, an idol for them to worship, rather than a tool for them to use in making life better. It's when power is used to genuinely help others, or to do God's will in other ways, that we see its real potential. Pharaoh caused harm to the Israelites because he thought that doing so would safeguard his power and kept that power away from them. The miracles which God performed for Moses and his people gave manna, water, meat, and good health to all of them, and no one lost the power to use those things because of the fact that others had it, just as my ability to use a cell phone is not decreased by the fact that other people can too. In fact, it's increased. Power can tempt people to cause harm to their fellow man for no reason, but that's not what it should do, and we shouldn't view power like that. 
power should be something that we can share with those who need it and use for God's purposes instead of viewing the power itself as our goal. To avoid this temptation, we can think about the practical, objective powers of the souls in heaven and long to be able to do more things for the sake of the greater goodness that would lead to. Next time, The Temptation of Prestige. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.